Good morning. Good morning. Uh, happy Easter to all of you. Uh, of course, the regular Easter greeting, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Uh, today we prayed uh, Divine Service 73, page 184. So go ahead and mark uh, page 184. We sing our opening hymn, that great Easter hymn, 457. And 457. your 
profession. I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue as we speak the intro. It's printed on the back of our bulletin. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. You have led in your steadfast love. will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain, the place, O Lord, which you have made for your abode. The sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established, the Lord will reign forever and ever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. We continue on page 186. Page 186 as we sing to Kyrie, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy upon Christ our Lord, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Now, it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. And he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You see Jesus of Nazareth, who is crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. And they went out and fled from the tomb, for trembling and astonishment had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We now confess our Christian faith together in one voice as we speak the words of the Nicene Creed. The Nicene Creed is on page 191. We confess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried.
black or brown hard little thing that looks dead. Right? Now, Jesus, you know what happened to Jesus, to Jesus on Friday? What happened to Jesus on Friday? He died! Yeah, Jesus died! <laughs> and then they put Jesus in the ground, in a tomb. Okay? Just like we put a seed into the ground for it to grow. Did Jesus stay there? No! <laughs> Today we celebrate that Jesus rose from the dead. Everyone say, Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus rose from the dead. Just like this flower. In the springtime, it comes out of the ground and grows in all of its green. And what color are its flowers here? You know what these flowers look like? They kind of look like a trumpet. Do you know what a trumpet is? Jameson knows, yeah. Because the trumpet is proclaiming that Jesus rose from the dead. Now this very first flower that comes out of the dark, cold <coughs> ground after winter is a flower that reminds us that Jesus rose from the dead because it has this trumpet flower that proclaims the good news that Jesus overcame death and the grave and he rose from the dead to forgive us for our sins and promises that we too will rise from the dead. Everyone say, I will rise from the dead. Yes. Now, yeah. today I don't have any candy for you. You know why? Because after, because I ate it all. <laughs> because after church, y'all have an Easter egg hunt. Now, what I want you to remember, when you take those Easter eggs, and you take out the candy. And then you have the egg. The egg is empty, right? Just, just like the empty tomb. Very good. This, this uh, the egg, oh, yeah, you gotta eat the candy, but, but the egg is empty, just like the tomb. Now, let's let's uh, say a prayer. Say, dear Jesus, thank you from rising from the grave. Help us to celebrate Easter and your resurrection from the dead. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, go ahead and back to your seats. What's that?
words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father and from the Lord and the Savior Jesus. Amen. Well, dear friends in Christ, during this Lenten season, which ends today as a uh, as Jesus has risen from the dead, we have been focusing on a psalm of David. Psalm 41. The last verse of that psalm says this. And this so this is David praying to God. And so this is us praying to the Lord God. We say, O Lord God, but you have upheld me. Because of my integrity. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. So again, the great Easter greeting. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now, I want to focus on this word integrity this morning. Integrity means, according to Webster's good old dictionary, integrity means whole and undivided. Integrity indicates original, unblemished condition. And because integrity means whole, original, and unblemished, the word can also be used to mean such beautiful qualities as honesty, faithfulness, purity, reliability, uprightness, honor, and even incorruptibility. And so David prays, because of my integrity. He did not write these words, not because he wanted to sing them all about himself. No. David wrote Psalm 41 because he wanted you this Easter day to sing and pray together with him that because of my integrity, God has lifted us up. He wanted you to say to God this day in sincerity and truth, You have upheld me, O Lord, because of my integrity. Can you bring yourself to do that? Can you honestly join with David in saying to God, You have upheld me, O Lord, because of my integrity. Now as Lutherans, we always hold to Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. For by grace I have been saved through faith. This not of myself, not by works, so that no one can boast. It is a gift from God. And here we have David saying, God upholds me because of my integrity. Because of who I am and what I do. So can you honestly pray that? The answer today is yes. Yes, because you are the baptized children of Christ. And because, again, the Easter of green, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And the resurrection of our Lord has guaranteed that your answer is indeed yes. You can pray that God will raise you up because of your integrity. Even though you might feel tempted to think that your answer should be no. Because of my integrity, Everybody wants to have integrity, but nobody actually has it, at least 
not in the original main sense of the word. No, our loss of integrity was originally Adam and Eve's fault. And it only later became our fault. Again, integrity means whole and undivided. Integrity indicates an, or, an original, unblemished condition. Integrity can also be used to indicate such things as honesty and faithfulness and purity. We all want to dis be described with such wonderful words as those. And to a certain extent, we all can be but only to a certain extent. So do you hesitate to pray to the Lord? You have upheld me, O Lord, because of my integrity. Perhaps you do not think that the qualities of integrity rightly describe you. <coughs> At least not all of the time, certainly for me. Not all the time. Perhaps you can see a different set of qualities working inside yourselves. Not unoriginal, not in original, unblemished condition. But maybe chipped or broken. Stained with sin. Hampered by the memory of the wrong doings we've done and marked with regret. Sure, we're honest. But maybe not always. True and faithful. But only when no temptation is present. Mostly reliable and fairly honorable and hopefully incorruptible. But hey, no one is perfect. Such realizations might make it feel a little, I don't know, brazen or dishonest for us to pray David's words, Oh Lord, you have upheld me because of my integrity. We all want to have integrity. And in most cases, any of us would gladly describe ourselves as having integrity. But we probably would not want to talk that way in the presence of God. Because God knows our hearts. God knows each time when our integrity has failed. So we may pray those words with the thought that they probably refer to someone else, but not so much me. But they are our words. We do pray them because we are baptized into Christ Jesus. And St. Paul reminds us that because we have been baptized into Christ, we have been baptized into his death. And we have been baptized into his resurrection, and we have been united with Christ inseparably. So what does this mean, that we have been united to Christ inseparably? Well, it means that when Jesus of Nazareth died upon his cross, you and I, and all baptized into Christ have died there at his cross with him. Baptism is why Paul can say, and we can each say with Paul, that I have been crucified with Christ. In addition to that, baptism also means that when Jesus rose from the dead, God the Father also raises us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ.
Christ Jesus. So at your baptism, when you are baptized, your Lord's perfection becomes yours. And your sin becomes his. Luther calls it the blessed exchange. At your baptism, God's strength becomes yours. And your weakness becomes his. At your baptism, the life of Christ becomes yours, and your death becomes his. And at your baptism, Jesus' perfect and unblemished integrity becomes yours. And any lack of integrity in you becomes his. You are now partakers of the divine nature, as St. Peter writes. So because of your baptismal participation in the divine nature of Christ, every scripture passage that speaks about Jesus now also speaks about you. In all of human history, you see, only Christ Jesus, our Lord, could pray to his Father on the basis of his own merit, again, on the basis of who he is and what he's done, only he could truly pray, Oh Lord, you have upheld me because of my integrity. But Jesus has now joined himself to you in that miraculous joining. Whatever the scriptures say about Jesus can now also be said in all faithfulness and honesty about you. So because you are baptized into Christ, into his death and his resurrection, you can pray, Oh Lord, I uh, uphold me because of my integrity. Again, that word integrity means whole and undivided. Integrity means in the original unblemished condition. Integrity says that indicates such qualities as honesty and faithfulness and purity and reliability and uprightness and honor and incorruptibility. And all of those things this Easter day describe Jesus, the one who was crucified and because of our Lord's personal integrity, God raised him up, loosing the pains of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. That was our gospel reading this morning. Mark chapter 16. The empty tomb. The angel saying, why are you looking for the living among the dead? And so by the power of his death and in the victory of his resurrection, Jesus has now given all of his integrity to you. So that his perfect integrity might be yours forever. Our Lord's personal integrity has been delivered to you in the waters of baptism, which joined you inseparably both to his resurrection or to his death and his resurrection. Our Lord Jesus' perfect integrity has miraculously entered into your heart and into your mind through the proclamation of the gospel. Our Lord's integrity likewise enters your mouth and fills your entire body when you participate in the blessed sacrament of the altar, eating his body and drinking his blood. 
And so with confidence we can proclaim there at the Lord's Supper that Christ lives. And we live with him. As we hear in Romans chapter 6, death no longer has dominion over him. Nor you. And our Lord's personal integrity, given personally to you, is the power by which you now can pray to the Lord with all godliness and with all honesty. Oh Lord, you have upheld me because of my integrity. Now, King David did not rely upon his own integrity, upon his own merit, upon anything he had done when he prayed this. No, King David relied upon the integrity of Christ Jesus, who was both David's son and David's Lord. So again, you and I today do not need to rely upon our own integrity, upon what we have done any more than David did. Because David's son was born also to us. David's Lord died also for us. David's prayer is there for our prayer. And David's rejoicing in eternity is likewise our rejoicing, both now and forever. So we pray this blessed Easter morning as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, who has become completely incorruptible in his integrity. We pray... Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. Why? Because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding. Guard our hearts and minds in the one true faith, here in the life everlasting. Amen. Now, in response to the preaching of God's word, we sing the words of Psalm 51. Create in me a clean heart of God. It begins on the bottom of page 192. Please stand as we sing.
our service uh, continues with our prayers. I'll conclude each petition by saying, Lord, in your mercy. Congregation responds by saying, hear our prayer. Please stand as we join in prayer. <coughs> Almighty God, you kept your promise and delivered up your own Son to be our Savior. By his sacrificial death, our sins are forgiven. And by his rising again, we have the hope of everlasting life. Keep us in this holy joy throughout the Easter season and all our daily lives, that we may not fear our enemies nor give in to the temptation of despair. In our days of trouble. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us hold fast to the word preached to us, that receiving it with joy, we may take our stand in it and be saved by it. Hinder all who would sow doubt in our hearts and grant us courage to confess its truth in our life and conversation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Have mercy on the sick and those in any need, especially among us, for Brad, Arthur, Tom, Gail, Marilyn, Ethley, Marvin, Pat, Gabe, Jennifer, Larry, Russell, Jamie, Russ, and Loretta, and all those we now name silently upon our hearts. Let the dawning light of the new creation in Christ Sustain them in faith. In accord with your will, grant them renewed health, a foretaste of their eternal healing in him. Lord, in your mercy. Give us joy in your son's great victory feast as he shares it with us from this altar. In the eating of his true body and the drinking of his precious blood in faith, overcome our sin by his forgiveness and swallow up our death in his life that we may be glad and rejoice in his salvation lord in your mercy we join today in singing eternal hallelujahs with innumerable angels in festal gathering with the assembly of the firstborn enrolled in heaven and with the spirits of the righteous made perfect and we bring these petitions before you, dear Father, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We begin the service of the sacraments as it begins on page 194. The Lord be with you.
priests on the same night when he was betrayed took bread. And after he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner, after supper, he also took the cup, and after he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Jesus and the drinking of his blood strengthen and preserve you in both body and soul in the one true faith even into life of the Lord. Be part in his peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. <laughs> Welcome to the Lord's table.
on page 199. Page 199 is we sing the song of Simeon. Please stand as we sing. Thank you. 